uh, thank you all so much for joining us this evening. <clears throat> We have people here tonight from all over the country, a few from other parts of the world. It's a very, very special evening tonight, and it's incredibly heartening and touching to see all of you here. And thank you so, so much for being here tonight to remember and celebrate the inspiring and inspired life of Rich Stalkup, naturalist extraordinaire, ecologist, PRBO co-founder, our dear friend, teacher, partner, father, grandfather, and champion of all things wild. Tonight, we're also celebrating our 2012 Birdathon, which Rich chaired and actively engaged in since its founding 35 years ago. The 2012 Birdathon is special not only because it's the 35th year, but we renamed the Birdathon, the Rich Stall Cup Birdathon, last year in honor of Rich because of his decades of being part of the Birdathon from the very first one, his being the number one fundraiser, I think every single year, just about, and uh, the number one birder out there with so many, many groups. Um, clearly, he was a fundraiser, but also a fun raiser, and we all had incredible times with him. Rich was extremely humble, as you all know, and we're deeply grateful that he agreed to have the Birdathon named after him. Uh, that was last spring, before most of us knew about his situation, and uh, it was great to know that he knew that his spirit and legacy would carry on through this and so many other ways. I want to acknowledge and welcome Rich's family who are here, uh, Heather Cameron, his life partner, Willow Martin Stalkup Hoffman, his daughter, Jackson, Willow's son and Rich's grandson, and Ken Stalkup, Rich's brother. We're so glad that you're all here with us today. <laughs> I also want to thank the phenomenal PRBO staff, our board of directors, especially our incredible chair, Ed Sarti, and everybody here who's been a board member sometime in our history, please raise your hand. I know there are quite a few of you here. Raise your hand, there you go. I can't really see, but thank you all for being here and for your leadership over the years and now. And I also want to thank all of you who are PRBO members and funders. We have a lot of our partners here tonight and uh, really appreciate your support. I want to thank the over 40 volunteers who are helping us tonight to make this possible. We couldn't have done it without you. And especially I want to thank our tribute organizing team, David Adams, Carrie Beaker, Nancy Gamble, Melissa Pitkin, Claire Peasley, and Eve Williams. And our deepest, <laughs> let's give them a hand. <clears throat> Also, I uh, want to thank the 2012 PRBO Rich Stall Cup Birdathon Committee, many of whom are sitting up front here. Uh, Bob Batigan, John Luther, Suzanne Methvin, Jerry Moogley, Mike Parmeter, Andy Rumer, Gail Rohrbauser, Lang Stevenson, Eve Williams, and of course, our beloved Birdathon Chair in memoriam, Rich Stall Cup. Ah, uh, Rich. His loss is so devastating to all of us. Uh, I keep thinking of it as the wind taken out of our sails, and not for me personally, for all of us at PRBO. Just kind of stopped us all in our tracks, as I'm sure it did for so many of you here tonight. We know that Rich lived his life to the fullest every single day, and I just heard from several of you talking upstairs about him taking you out birding when he was very sick in November and not wanting to talk about it, wanting to see the birds, wanting to be out there in nature and experience life, and that's just who he was up until the very end. And uh, what's wonderful is that I think that he would not want us to mourn him, but I think he would want us to celebrate his life. And fortunately, all of us have been touched by him and we can carry a piece of him forward. I'd like to share a poem with you 
that uh, some of you have seen that I posted on our website. It's called Life After Death by Laura Gilpin. These things I know, how the living go on living and how the dead go on living with them so that in a forest, even a dead tree casts a shadow and the leaves fall one by one and the branches break in the wind and the bark peels off slowly and the trunk cracks and the rain seeps in through the cracks and the trunk falls to the ground and the moss covers it and in the spring the rabbits find it and build their nest inside the dead tree so that nothing is wasted in nature or in love. Here is a, another beautifully written passage I want to share that was written on December 16th, the day after Rich died. I first met Rich on October 17th, 1980. He became my best friend and hero from the very first moment. Since then, not a week has gone by that I haven't talked or visited with him a few times. A day has not passed that he hasn't bettered my life and made me smile. Not a second has gone by that I didn't know I could count on him for anything. We are so very sad about the loss of my dad, a man who many of you know as a guide, mentor, leader, author, teacher, comrade, friend, and for some, an accomplice. <laughs> but I know as the very best dad in every sense of the word, an advocate, a lobbyist, a cheerleader, a right hand, a confidant, a beacon on the coast, a north star, and yes, the light atop my boat. He is absolutely the wide world to my two broken-hearted little boys whom he held so dear. We are currently without cause or direction, simply trying to make sense of this new life with the giant void where he once stood. My darling dad, I know, is now without pain or struggle and more than earned his rest. I want to thank you all for this overwhelming outpouring of love and kindness, so thank you. You cannot know how very much it helps. To you all, sincerely and with a full heart, may your days be merry and bright. Willow Martin Stalkup Hoffman. Uh, thank you for letting us share that. And now I want to invite Melissa Pitkin to come join me. <clears throat> Melissa is our Director of Education and Outreach and officially was Rich's boss. But as Heather, and I'm sure many others will tell you, no one was Rich's boss. <laughs> and Melissa never thought of herself that way. Um, Melissa worked with Rich as part of the education and outreach team for the last 15 years, and during that time, they became great friends and colleagues and enjoyed working together, co-leading and planning all kinds of trips and communications and birding efforts and other kinds of outreach, including a book that Melissa co-wrote with Rich called Discovering Birds at Point Reyes. Oh, thank you guys all for coming. It's uh, truly an honor to be here. And uh, as Ellie mentioned, Rich and I knew each other for the last uh, 15 years. Uh, I never thought of myself as his boss, but I, w I am really happy that I got to be part of the link that got Rich back into the PRBO family and feel really honored to have had that relationship with him. Um, what I have here, I wanted to let you know, we, we received a, a letter from Barbara Boxer um, acknowledging Rich's contributions and also a certificate of special congressional recognition from the congressman Jared Huffman. And I just wanted to read you a little bit from the Huffman letter, which actually is the very first special certificate of recognition that Jared Huffman has ever issued as a congressman. Um, and I think it really captures a lot of what we all feel about Rich. So it's very official congressional language here. Whereas Rich Stallcup, revered birder, naturalist, ecologist, teacher, conservation advocate, and beloved friend, dedicated his entire life to understanding and protecting the natural world, 
inspired and taught thousands of people about the beauty and magic of birds and nature. And whereas Rich was a champion for nature and all things wild and also an incredibly loving, kind, and generous human being, while we have lost a true conservation hero, the likes of whom we will never know again, we can celebrate his remarkable life because his legacy lives on in so many of us. And then it ends with, now therefore be it resolved that Congressman Jared Huffman, 2nd Congressional District of California, joins many others in mourning the loss of this environmental champion and is honored to celebrate the life and memory of Rich Stalkup as a leading naturalist and ecologist for California and the country. And I, there's a lot more to this letter, um, and if anyone would like to read it after, I'd be happy to share it. But I think those words really encompass a lot of what we all feel about Rich. And in addition to being a dear friend to me, uh, Rich was a teacher, and I was his student. And I learned so much from him, and now I know that I share a feeling with all of you, a feeling of loss and a void, and I know I've been asking and I've heard others asking, who are we going to ask our questions to? So I know we all share that sentiment, um, but I also know that we share, excuse me, <laughs> share the sadness. Um, I also know that we're sharing the feeling of privilege and honor and thankfulness to have known him and learned from him and been inspired by him. And I know that we will all do a great job in living out his legacy and teaching others about the beauty of the natural world and each of our role in protecting it. So thank you, everyone, for coming tonight. Thank you so much, Melissa. And now, Heather, would you come up? So a lot of you know Heather from birding together and times with Rich. Um, but maybe a lot of you don't know that in her professional life, she holds a senior position at Publishers Group West based in Berkeley, where she manages relationships with um, some 60 independent book publishers. Heather and Rich met 16 years ago on a field trip that he led. They shared a deep love of nature that began for each of them very early in life. Heather grew up in the Bay Area, fell in love with horses at the age of four, and then, because of a childhood allergy, turned her energies from mammals to birds, amphibians, and reptiles. Sounds like someone else we know. <laughs> Yet she had never been on a bird walk before her first group outing with Rich. She not only found out about pishing that day, but also saw her first spotted owl and marveled that Rich knew every bird sound near and far. Please join me in thanking Heather for being with us today. Well, I too thank you all for being here to honor Rich. And I thank everyone at PRBO for organizing and hosting this very special gathering. And Rich would want to thank you for your friendship, love, support, and for all of the adventures, the joy and discovery in nature that you and he shared. Rich's friendship, leadership, knowledge, and magic was a gift to all of us. He was a master at instilling a love of wild things in us, and in doing so, this was a gift back to him. It seems impossible to fathom that we won't see Rich again, at least in his physical form. But yesterday, when walking out to the lighthouse in the late afternoon with our friend Karen, Rich seemed to be everywhere, among the, the cypress trees, in the wind, in the drifting fog, in the bush lupin, and on the wing of the peregrine, that flew over the ocean below us. And it seems difficult to move forward in life after this immense loss. But that's what Rich would want us to do, to be strong, 
So to continue doing what we do, remember what we learned from him, get outside to care about and appreciate every bird and wild creature we see and protect them in every way we can. I will miss Rich's powerful and gentle spirit, his wisdom and honesty, his sensitivity and strength, his wonderful sense of humor, and I thank him for how incredibly thoughtful and generous he was every day. I am forever grateful for the years and love we shared and that he brought so many of you into my life. For Rich, every day was filled with curiosity. There's always something new to learn. His own sense of wonder was continuously expanding. Rich's impact on all of us is indelible. He has changed our lives for the better and made the world a better place. We will all miss Rich deeply, but he will, be, he will live on in our hearts, thoughts, and actions. Thank you so much. Trucking, got my chips cashed in. Keep trucking, like the do dog man together. More or less in line, just keep trucking on. Flashing my keys out on Main Street Chicago, New York, Detroit And it's all on the same street A typical city involved in a typical daydream Hang it up and see what tomorrow brings Dallas got a soft machine Houston, too close to New Orleans New York got the ways and means And just won't let you be You meet on the streets, speak of true love Most of the time they're sitting and crying at home One of these days, they know they gotta get going Out of the door and down to the street all alone Chugging like the dude I man Once told me you got to pay your hand Sometimes the cards ain't worth a dime If you don't lay them down
days don't you worry anymore Cause when life looks like easy street There is danger at your door Think this through with me Let me know your mind Oh, oh, what I want to know oh, is are you kind? It's a buck dancer's choice, my friends better take my advice. You know all the rules by now and the fire from the ice. Will you come with me? Won't you come with me? Oh, oh, what I want to know oh, Will you come with me? Purple Finch singing Perp I think the pigeon was, became obscured by leaves when I lowered. Did you get any Oh, I got a great look at the head, oh, and good. I could see the white bands on the neck. Mm -hmm. Okay. Come with me or go alone. He's come to take his children home. Sorry, the crow told me it's the only one to know. Like the morning sun, you come, and like the wind, you go. Ain't no time to hate, barely time to wait. Silver mine, and I call it Beggar's Tomb. I got me a violin, and I beg you call the tomb. Anybody's choice, I can hear your voice. Oh, oh, what I want to know, oh, how does the song go? John's band by the riverside Got some things to talk about Here beside the rising tide Come here, Uncle John's band Playing to the tide Come on along and go alone He's come to take his children home Along with the thousands of stories just in this room that pertain to those and so many images that we have in our minds of time spent with Rich, just got to acknowledge the dozens of people from Native Birds and Skuas and PRBO and Beach Watch and on and on who 
responded to our request for photos and videos. I um, want to thank the Grateful Dead <laughs> for the soundtrack. And Glenn Williams, the stalwart husband of our membership director, Eve, who spent countless hours and all his talent and inspiration putting this together. Glenn. Thank you. So we're kind of rediscovering how laughter and tears and fondness and a wealth of insight and magic can all occur in the same time. And we're going to tell a few stories, just sample from the ocean of stories there are about Rich. But before we start this next section, I'd just like to invite everybody here to summon up one of their fondest memories of Rich. And just sit with that for a moment, quietly now. You know, it's our shared gift from him. It's the lore. And it'll always inspire us through our whole lives. We may miss the man in person, but he's totally, sorry, <laughs> totally with us. So we're going to take a little eyedropper uh, from the uh, waters of a story that exists about Rich. And I'm going to invite three guests that will do our best to represent uh, some of the wonder that we experienced. Jules Evans, Kate Carolyn, and Aaron Heyman, if you would come up here right now. I forgot to say my name is Claire Peasley, and I'm on the staff of PRBO for a long time, responsible for the quarterly journal, The Observer, that included Rich's focus pieces for a long time, a uh, longtime friend. And I'm just going to ask each of you, starting with Aaron, to say your name and what you are, who you do, and <laughs> how, you, how you knew our friend, sort of a little one-sentence autobiography. Uh, well, my name is Aaron Heyman, and uh, I met Rich when I was about 10 years old originally on one of his PRBO-led bird walks. And uh, I also got to spend a lot of time with him on the PRBO Youth Birdathon team, which I was one of the founding members of. And what are you doing these days? I'm current. Well, I mean, I've followed birds. I'm currently working on my PhD looking at bird speciation at UC Davis. Great. Kate. I'm Kate Carolyn, and I met Rich in... 93, and um, became a native birder soon after. <laughs> and uh, I ran Rich's Native Birds uh, birding group for 10 years. Thanks. Jules? Jules Evans. Um, I first met Rich in the early 70s, and uh, he used to show up at our house in Bolinas about four o'clock in the afternoon, cause, and I realized it was because we had this beautiful view of Bolinas Bay, and we'd sit out on the porch with scopes and uh, other entertainment, <laughs> and, <laughs> and look for sheer waters and whatever is flying by. And uh, that time of day was important because the sun was off to the west, and we were looking sort of south. And my wife was a really good cook, so he'd stay for dinner. <laughs> And he usually showed up with somebody. Some of you who are in this room, I think Pete Alsing and Dave Shuford and others, uh, somebody was always with him. And uh, just a lot of memories come from that time. And since then, we've worked together on and off for the next 40 years. So uh, that sort of leads us into what we're all, the main activity that those of us fond of Rich and connected with him in any way are involved in these days, which is uh, telling memorable stories. You know, I, I read, I reread Ken Kaufman's uh, blog piece where he's calling up Keith Hansen on the telephone and starting to, like a day or two after Rich's death, and 
sort of crying and choking up and then sort of laughing and the stories just began to flow and we know that there's a lot of magic involved in our in our experiences. So Aaron, you started with the youth birdathon team when you were and like a teenager or yeah. something, one of the original members and mm -hmm. Ridge probably took you into some magical places. Can you remember one in particular? Uh, yeah, so this is uh, not the first year, maybe the second year of the Birdathon. Uh, we had gone out you know, really early, Birdathon, we were trying to cover as much ground as possible. Everybody knows the routine. Um, and we'd done some owling and had been pretty successful. And so he said, you know, we've done pretty well so far. Let's try for the spotted owl. And this is one spot that I know. And we're like, all right, you know, light is coming on, but we'll, we'll give it a shot. And so we went to this little spot, and we crossed this little bridge. And as we got to the other end of the bridge, he said, so we're about to enter this grove of redwood trees. And it's a place where spotted owls nest pretty frequently. It's kind of, kind of sacred ground. So you know, treat it with respect, and we'll go in, and we'll see what we can find. And we just sort of very quietly entered this grove of redwoods, huge trees. And he said, so the first thing we're going to hear is going to be Stellar's Jays over there. And we get maybe five paces in. Stellar's Jay, over there. <laughs> the next thing we're going to hear is going to be Varied Thrush coming up from the top of the ridge. Five more paces, Varied Thrush, top of the ridge. Wow. All right, then. It's like, so, and if we're really lucky, we can all sit down, you know, find a comfy spot, and the spot owl will show up. So we're like, well, all right. So we find a comfy spot, sit down, wait, wait, spotted owl. <laughs> Amazing. As a, as a young guy who discovered birds early on and then connected with Rich when you were only about 10 years old, did the surprises just keep coming? I mean, and, you're, and you last did a birdathon with him, what, how uh, long ago? So unfortunately, it wasn't, it wasn't 2012. That one got canceled for well, health reasons, um, but 2011. Right on. So you're still with the team and Absolutely. continuing. I'll right. keep coming back as long as they let me. Okay, I think that's, that's a deal. <laughs> Kate, you, you went birding with Rich on a regular basis with the native birds and probably other ways. Uh, did you like uh, pick out a particularly memorable time when you entered that magic? Well, they were all memorable. Um, Rich had this incredible gift of bringing you into the moment. And some people sit and meditate. Richest thing was, let's get in the car, and let's just go riding. And we look, and we find, and we experience. And no matter what your day was, you'd forget about everything. Within eh, five, 15 minutes, you were in his zone, and you would follow his focus. And I was looking at that picture, and I remember that day. <laughs> And it was a native bird day, and he had a gopher hanging off his foot. And the, the gopher had bit on his boot, and he was, you know, kicking the <laughs> gopher around. And he picked up the snake, and then he showed us this bird and that bird. And it was like, boom, boom, boom. And I thought, this is going to be one of those great days. <laughs> and then we head out to Drake's Beach, and there's, I think it was 10 or maybe 30,000 phalaropes. And David Tome was there, and he called it the phalarope fallout. And all these phalaropes were coming off the waves. And they were there for like three days. And then sometimes we'd go out, and there was nothing going on. But Rich would make the white crowned sparrow like this fantastic discovery. <laughs> and it didn't matter what you were looking at. He just grabbed your attention, and you had so much fun. And everything else just went away. And then you, he'd say, OK, now you all go back where you came from. And then we'd all go back into our lives until the next, the next time. Beautiful. Hey, thank you. That's gorgeous. Jules? Well, as a counterbalance to your statement that he'd like to get in the car and go, 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 um, one of my fond memories of many, of course, was uh, November 9th, 1981. And, and Rich had this idea, I think the night before, that we should do a big sit, which, <laughs> which is sort of the opposite of a big day, where you sit in one spot. We actually had a 10-meter 10 10 meter circle. We couldn't go outside the circle. South end of Tomales Bay in what's known as Shields Marsh looking east, and we got there around 5 in the morning. Again, this was 1981, and we had lawn chairs and supplies. And, uh, 
and we started, actually, I can't remember what the first bird was, but I, it was probably a spotted owl, given where it was. But um, so we sat there as mostly hearing things, ticking off what we were hearing. And by 1046 that morning, we'd got 100 species sitting in this one place. And Rich said, and I'm not sure this is true, but knowing Rich, it probably was, that's a world record for a big sit. <laughs> and it was a pygmy nuthatch, by the way. That was the 100th bird. Wow. And, we, and wow. one of the amazing things about this was we both had one-year-old children, girls. Willow and my daughter, Viri, were one. And our wives allowed us to go out there and sit there all day. <laughs> they even showed up with uh, goodies from the uh, Foggy Mountain Bakery, which was right down the road at about 10.30 in the morning, but at, from 10.46 on, we only saw nine more species. So the, the count for the day was 109 species. Nothing really rare, but we got everything that was within earshot or sight. And he had this Questar scope, if you remember. It was a blue scope, which you look in the top. And the last bird of the day was looking across Tomales Bay. It must have been a mile away. And I'm sure Rich spotted it first. It was a Says Phoebe sitting up on the... <laughs> on a barbed wire fence through the quest star. And undoubtedly, I say it's Phoebe, but it was so far away. But he'd been scoping. So that was, uh, that was one of hundreds of wonderful days. Well, we're going to um, spend the rest of our lives remembering day by day, episode by episode, <clears throat> many instances of that magic. And I think uh, part of the deal here, as we uh, you know, gratefully express our um, appreciation and live it out, figure out, you know, how to do more of those magical days, communing with uh, our friend when we, when we have those kinds of sightings, is the, just to consider, you know, how he'd want us to continue doing the work that was important to him. And I thought each of you might have a way of expressing how your life sort of shaped up or got focused or got inspired by knowing Rich. I, I would like to read something, and some of you may already know this. Um, I'm a third, third time graduate of bird school. <laughs> and I, um, I was looking through my bird school notes, and this just really, it sums it up for me, and I think it really sums it up what Rich was about, and he said, in the end, it doesn't matter that we can place the right name or any name for each bird. What matters is that we love them and take care for their needs. And that, to me, is, is my focus, is taking care of their needs now. Um, Good. Thanks. Thanks for reminding us. That's sort of a focal bit of wisdom. Jules or Aaron? Aaron? Part of him was that it wasn't just the birds even, it was everything. It was all of, all of California, all of everything. I mean, I remember I once brought him this gopher snake, and I was very pleased with myself. I, I knew that it was a gopher snake. And he was like, oh, great, it's a gopher snake, and it's the subspecies, and this is why, and this is the details of its natural history. I stood there, how do you possibly know that much stuff about any given random thing that I bring you? <laughs> I started making it a game from then on. I bring him something random, I'm like, okay, tell me something about that. And he could, something about that. Good, all right. <laughs> So living up to that would be one of the things that I think is an important legacy. Well, because. I think you are, and keep it up. Uh, well, lesson. Let's see a lesson. The last week of his life, um, we'd been surveying Sonoma Baylands for water birds for 16 years, started in 1996 when the restoration there happened. And Rich did the bulk of the work. He'd go out there 14 times a year, different seasons, and the surveys. And the last week of his life, he called me up on Wednesday before he died and uh, told me he was going out to Sonoma Baylands to do another survey that week. And I knew he wasn't feeling well, and I said, really? And he said, yeah, I could do it tomorrow or the next day. And uh, sort of the lesson for that was pursue, pursue your interests and your dreams right up to the end. It was indomitable spirit. That's definitely how he lived. I think that's a... That's a, that's a good note to wrap it up on. I feel that all of us are taking inspiration from knowing Rich and sharing these stories. It's so important to keep telling one another over dessert after this reception. And on the PRBO website, in any way that you can communicate, keep
keep them coming. We want to we wanna pool all these stories and, and enjoy this wisdom forever. Thanks, folks. Thanks for being good humans. Thank you, all of you. We get the Ellie hug first. Thank you so much. Just have all these incredible visuals of the gopher on the boot and walking out early in the morning and knowing exactly which birds are where. And I like that big sit world record, especially. <laughs> so thank you again, uh, Kate and Aaron and Jules and Claire. Really appreciate that. We know that uh, words are inadequate to express the impact that Rich's life had on so many of us. And I want to share with you now a writing of Rich's own that he wrote actually in 1988 about David Gaines when he had a, a tragic death um, and way early in his life, who had been the founder of Mono Lake Committee. His words uh, really are prophetic and describe Rich himself. And uh, we have a copy of this for each of you when you leave tonight as a remembrance of Rich. Again, so Rich wrote this. He was sibling and advisor to hundreds of people and senior senator for the smaller plants and animals. He was a one-man champion of a little life in an era when only large organization language can usually be heard. He was an all-round naturalist, a master of many fields, but his eternal teaching is gentle and inquiring as if he too is the learner, perfect. I plan to be with him every time I hear the clear, cold morning song or sassy chant chanting of mountain chickadees, smell the early spring foliage of sagebrush after a rain, see Mastacophis teniatus whip across the salty sands, find little elephant heads blooming in the high country, think of Yosemite toad pollywogs overwintering at Tioga Pass, and of course, through all the wild wonderment of Mono Lake. But then, it may be no longer than the blink of a pine martin's eye before we are all together again, dancing on the shore. This photo is by Scott Hine, who is another premier birder, and we appreciate uh, being able to use this. And this was published in the PRBO newsletter in uh, 1988. Well, I know every one of you has at least one story and probably many, many stories to tell about Rich. And uh, my biggest disappointment of tonight, other than that Rich isn't here, is that we can't have each of you share those stories. When we were planning this, we kept talking about how do we find a way so that everybody can tell their story because it's incredible to hear the stories. And, um, we do encourage you, as Claire said, to visit our website and to share your stories on there. It really helps to be able to share it with community, even virtually. And uh, I hope you'll be able to do that. We already have over 100 entries, and just reading through stories that many of you have put on, we really appreciate it. We have decided at PRBO to honor Rich's memory by establishing the Rich Stall Cup Memorial Fund that will support education and related programs to continue his remarkable legacy of teaching and inspiring students of all ages. We can keep going to bird school forever and ever, and whatever age we're at, um, and to continue teaching about birds and nature and conservation. Um, we thank many of you who've already donated to the fund, and there is a, an envelope in your program that you can send or you can donate online. We also are dedicating a bench at Schallenberger Park in memory of Rich, and uh, many of you here have been there with Rich birding, and we hope you will go there and not to bird, to be able to go out and enjoy nature and to remember Rich and stop by our office, our headquarters, which is just a few miles from here. Um, our winter observer, our quarterly journal, will be dedicated entirely to Rich. Uh, it'll come out in February. Um, and many of you know that he wrote the focus column about birding in our observers, which used to be called the PRBO newsletter, uh, since when Burr Henneman was executive director in 1981 and had the brilliant idea of asking him to do that. And we have an amazing collection 
in writing of riches, wisdom, and teachings. And we will continue to publish those in each of our quarterly journals because uh, the teachings, like Rich, are eternal and timeless, and uh, we can keep learning from him. Rich's passing has uh, left a, a deep void in all of our lives. And uh, as I said earlier, we're, we're all incredibly lucky. Uh, I personally feel incredibly lucky to have been touched by his life. Um, and I truly believe that we will never meet in a single lifetime another person like Rich. He was incredibly special. Just keep chugging on.